Hello Internet, welcome to the second part of the episode Built of a Raised Garden Bed. The first part was about the construction and the woodwork and about the preparation of the individual wooden parts. In this part we will assemble the raised bed, fill it and plant the first time. As I showed in part 1, my basic design based on 4 posts and some Douglas firewood profiled boards for the side walls. I choose Douglas wood because it is more resistant to decay if used outside. As you will see later in the video, I will use a drainage mat to separate the wooden walls from the wet soil in the raised bed. For the attachment of the side walls, I have chosen a design with grooves. This makes the corner posts visible. This is just a matter of design. Have a look in part 1 of this episode to have a more detailed look on the design and the construction and the measures. I will add a link right here. But before we start with the construction, the environment in the garden and the ground has to be prepared. This is a good time to reconsider the position of the bed and to compare the plan with the conditions in the garden. Questions like from which direction does the sun come? How does the shadow of the surrounding plants run during the day? How far is it to the water? How close is the fireplace? Etc. 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 The top layer of grass should be removed and also any roots should be removed from the ground. Then the surface can be leveled. In my case I decided to put the posts on concrete blocks. I had already thought about it. And it turned out that the finished raised bed is really heavy. It is a good idea to put some concrete blocks below the post so that the load is evenly distributed. As it turned out, I should have used larger stones, because the raised bed has lowered again at some corners. But it's not really a big problem. Um, it's the garden and we don't measure in millimeters here, but yeah, it's not so nice if your raised bed is lower on one side. And it is also important that the posts do not stand on the ground and the water can run off. This increases the lifetime of the raised bed. The same applies to the side walls. Here I moved the concrete plates a little bit to the inside so that the side walls lie on top. Of course the interior should be open to the ground so that the water can run off and an exchange of organisms with the ground can take place. Depending on the ground conditions, there is more or less work to be done here. In my case, I spent about 4-5 to five hours until I had everything the way I wanted it. Now we can continue with the assembly of the individual wooden components. I have set up the sides and screwed them together. Just straightforward. As I already explained in part 1, I did use wooden screws with a length of 100 mm and 6 mm thick. So in imperial measures I think it's a number 10 or a number 12 with 3.5 or 4 inches long. Finally you should check again if everything is at an angle and measure diagonally between the corners. If the length of the diagonals over the corners are the same, then the raised bed is at the right angle. This is especially helpful if you want to put a wooden frame on the top of the upper edge of the sides, um, like I did afterwards. As soon as the frame of the raised bed is in place, you can go forward. I have attached a wire mesh to the ground to keep any rodents away. This allows smaller organisms to move between the ground and the raised bed, but not larger rodents. Since there was no wire mesh wider than 1 meter, 
I had to connect two stripes of the mesh with the board. Then I stabled the grid with the thin board at the sides. Most important is that there should be no loophole here, because otherwise it will be used. Then I insulated the sides with a drainage mat and stapled them with an electric stapler gun. I laid out a drainage mat in one sheet all around, so that there is no place where the water can get to the wood of the walls of the raised garden bed. To prevent the side walls from being pressed apart by the white of the filling, I added a threaten rod between the long sides and this, this gives some additional stability to the raised bed. For the upper end of the raised bed, I have put a frame with ductless fear square timbers. The square timbers have a width of 94 mm and a thickness of 44 mm. This gives the side walls some protection against water from above and it's also a pleasant support or working surface if you work on the raised bed. I simply screwed the square timbers to the posts and I'll show you the technical drawing and how I place the screws here in the video. I filled the raised bed in layers from coarse to fine. The lowest layer should be able to drain water, so I used large pieces of wood. Coarse stones are also a possibility, by, uh, but I had wood at hand. Afterwards, I started with a layer of coarse branches and green sections, which came from a hedge that I cut it. And in between, I added some compost. In the following layer I worked with coarse compost and added some soil. For the last 20 cm I mixed organic plant soil and topsoil from the garden with a mixing ratio of about 1 to 1. Each layer has to be compacted, taking care that the raised bed does not warp and that the threaded rod in the middle is not pressed down. The filling needs a lot of good topsoil. In addition, you can buy plant soil, but this can become very expensive. There are big differences in the quality of plant soil, so you should check before you buy. Fortunately, I had a lot of my own compost, which helped to keep the costs low. So what is important for the planting of the raised garden bed? What I found very interesting here is, it should be noted here that not all plants harmonize with each other and next to each other. But this is not my topic and there are a lot of sources on the internet to get more details. So here again our planting plan for this raised bed and our location. With this I would like to close the topic and I hope it could serve as a suggestion for the one or the other. Um, any questions, suggestions, leave them in the comment section below. Um, if I have the chance, I will answer them. And if you like the content of this video, leave me a like. This will support my channel. 
That's all for today. Thanks for watching. Have fun with your project. Ciao.